Hi guys, I'm Danish, owner of Espace Pilates in Montreal, Canada. Uh, I'm going to do some uh, reformer maintenance today, basic reformer maintenance. There's no uh, maintenance company that I'm aware of that does Graz equipment, uh, uh, Graz apparatus here in Montreal, so I do my own maintenance. Um, so I'll take you through that quickly. You'll need a few tools. You're going to need, well, first of all, you need drags. I like to cut up old cotton t-shirts, old paintbrush, some um, a half inch wrench and socket wrench, also half inch, and a hex key. I have a whole set, but it seems to me that I need the number four here. And then, most importantly, you need three in one oil and white lithium grease. This one is key, this guy. Um, I do have some experience in carpentry and cabinet making, but uh, I figured this stuff out with the help of Adrian Yugorski of uh, Pilates Pro Maintenance in New York City. And also, uh, it was a great refresher to watch that video from Pilatesology that's on YouTube on how to maintain Graz reformers uh, by Top Gun, the owner of Top Gun Pilates. So let's get started. So first of all, you wanna go through your whole reformer and check that every hook and every strap looks like it's in good shape. So if you, if this, this is fine, this is great, but if this was worn here, there was a little bit of metal worn, or if this little peg didn't close while it was like offside, then you would need to replace those. Or if the strap looked like it was losing integrity, you would need to replace that. Then you take your paintbrush and you just clean out any dirt that gets accumulated in little spots. Especially, I'll go through the rest, but especially around the shoulder box, there's always dirt. And I never knew how to get rid of that until I found out from people who know how to do this stuff that you take that paintbrush and you get the dirt out with that. It works better than a vacuum cleaner even. Then you want to take your rag and wipe out any gunk that's stuck in in the axle where the foot bar joins the base, where it turns. Once it's clean, this one's pretty clean on this side, then you take your three-in-one oil and you just put a drop of oil or two right in there and turn it back and forth to work the oil in. And I'll actually put another drop from this side. I always get oil everywhere. I don't know how the, the oil goes just where I want it and not everywhere. So then I wipe off the axis, excess oil off the axle. Then you go to the back while you have your 3-in-1 oil and you check the back wheels that the leather straps ride on. If they really go like clunk, 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 you probably want to take them right apart and use the white lithium grease like we do on the carriage wheels. But these ones turn silently, so usually they don't need to be done that often with the white lithium grease. You can just Put a drop of three in one oil right in, try and get it right into the axle on both sides. Wiping off any axis drops again. And spin it a bit to get that oil work into the axle. One thing I forgot to mention is sometimes it's good to put some oil here where the kick stand, kick stand, this thing screws into the foot bar. But I'm not gonna do that today, it seems pretty good. So, from here on in, we're gonna start working on the carriage wheels. So if they're removable shoulder rests, take them out, get them out of the way so you don't trip over them. Take your, 
hair bar out to get it out of the way. And take your reformer and flip it all the way over. Now the reformer has this metal edge and you don't necessarily want to ding your um, rails with the metal edge. So as you turn it around, maybe get someone to help you in an ideal world so that you can flip it right over. I'm gonna rest it here and change my grip. Ideally flip it right over without dinging it. I personally, I don't know, you guys can comment in the comment section if you think this is a good idea or not. I kind of like to rotate my springs. So, because we tend to use the outside two springs more often than the inside springs, inside two. So I've swapped my springs around so the outside springs ended up on the inside and the inside ones on the outside. I know some people don't do that and they just order, they replace just the two outside springs, I guess. So I would actually be curious to know what you guys think of that. Make sure the little, uh, if you do move the springs around, make sure the hook is facing up because then when you flip it over, if it's hanging the other way, it can fall out, which is really dangerous while you're working out. And then you're like in the middle of a long stretch and you lose your spring and you can fall flat on your face. Cover your uh, undercarriage with a uh, cloth to keep it nice and clean. And we start with the wheels. So there's four of these little guide wheels and four of the actual wheels that the carriage that carries the weight of the carriage over here. Let me start with a guide wheel. So take your um, hex key, loosen the nut with the hex key, and then it can un just unscrew by hand afterwards. Careful not to lose any of the little washers. I lost one of the small ones on the other one. I found it finally, but it took me forever to find. It's really tiny. And just take your rag and clean all the gunk, all the old grease off the axle so it's nice and clean, off the wheel. off the base of the wheel and off the little uh, washers, both of them. So they're kind of just with a dry cloth. Oily stuff is always better dry, never use wet. Personally, I haven't seen anyone else do this, but personally, I really like to, I mean, these are not so critical more on the other wheels, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I'll do it in all of them. I take the cloth and I like to stick it right through the hole in the wheel, kind of thread it through. This is like slow TV. This tends to go better when there's no cameras rolling. I grab the other side and then you know, the cloth is in the middle, in the hole in the wheel. And then if there's any hair or gunk in there, you're getting it out and it's all nice and clean. Then you take your white lithium grease. You apply some to the base. You, I, this, I haven't seen other people do this, but I really find it works better to apply some inside the wheel on both sides. Put a little dab on inside on both sides. And what people tend to do, and I also like to do, that wait, let me put that washers on first. There, and then I'll also put it on the actual screw axle. I like to get a little bit on three sides because it always seems to just get pushed out of the way. So then you stick it through, you put the, put it back together and kind of twist it as you put it in to try and get that grease to go through. But since I put some inside the wheel as well, it doesn't just all get mushed up to the top. It also gets pushed through. If there's too much access on the bottom, I like to clean most of it off. And then you screw it back in place.
and give it a good tighten. And give it a spin, see how it spins. Now, which one do you guys see? Well, maybe this one, eh? Uh, sure. So this one, you can also check. This one is actually sounds really good. Oh, can you guys hear this one back here? This one back here. Do you hear that sound on the video? It's like clunk, 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 clunk. This is the worst one, and that's a really, if it sounds like that, that's really a sign that it really does need to get cleaned. So, let's start with that one. Let's see if we can make it better right away. Except you can't see this one. Okay, we'll start with one you guys can see well, and then I'll do that one after. So you loosen up your your lock nut. Again, it's half inch. Carefully take out the axle. And you see how it's kind of all gunky and black around the sides. And there is these little plastic washers on it too. You want to really wipe everything nice and clean with your rag. So I'm going to start here. Wipe this clean. And I wipe the little plastic washers clean. It's not too bad if you do it often. Really? Once I had a reformer that I bought used that probably hadn't been done in like, I exaggerate, not probably 10 years was surprisingly doing okay, but it, it took so long to get it done because the old grease had literally like dried and hardened. So I, I kind of needed to like really put some elbow grease in there, so to speak. Not thinking back, maybe I could have put some three in one oil and kind of, you know, like soaked the old grease so that it could have um, softened up a bit. Maybe that would have helped clean it after. But if, so that's the problem with not doing regular reformer maintenance is that it can get so bad that it actually takes like, it took me like six hours to really get that reformer clean. I was ready to buy new wheels for it. But finally in the end, I just oiled it up well. And it seems to be working just fine. I'm sure at one point it'll be time to buy new wheels for it. But right now it seems to be working pretty well. So. Let me try that again. Not exactly exciting television here. So I'm taking this rag and I'm trying to shove it inside the axle, inside the hole of the wheel to really get the gunk out from in the middle too. There. And then it's time to grease it back up again. So, I, as I said, I love to put a bit of grease inside, into the hole, so that it doesn't all get, I find if you only put it on the screw, which is what most people suggest, as you're putting it in, just the friction presses all the grease out. I'm never convinced that there's as much grease inside in the axle where it really needs to be as there could be. Then, we're taking a little bit of lithium uh, grease, a little bit of the white lithium grease and just putting a few dots here. It doesn't really serve for much. It's really there just to hold this little plastic washer in place. Oh shoot, I meant to do that from the other side. So I'm gonna put this from the opposite side. All right, that's what I meant to do. Let's stick that other washer on too. Then, oh wait, wait, 
باشد یه آیت قرار بگیرم And we take it, we put it on, we stick the screw back to, trying to get some of that lithium grease to go inside the axle. But since I did put some inside the axle, it's pretty safe bet that there's enough in there. Wipe off if there's a lot of access, excess. I always, I always put too much white lithium grease, so then there's always an excess. So let's wipe that off because, like hairs and stuff, get even more kind of big, kind of stick onto the grease. And then we tighten it back up. Now, you want to tighten it enough, just enough. So you, if you tighten it too much, the wheel will actually stop turning. It's like really low tech. You can tighten it so much that you lock the wheel in place, which you obviously don't want to do. So why don't I show you that actually? So here the wheel, the wheel is still spinning and there's quite a bit of play, more than there was to begin with. So that's not tight enough yet. But if I tighten it too much, oh, it's still spinning, There's, it's a little too tight, but it's still spinning, let me really show you. If I really over tighten it, it doesn't spin anymore. So then, I'll loosen it from there a bit. Yeah, that seems all right. Definitely spins easily. All right. And that's it. So you, we've done one of these uh, guide wheels and one of these normal carriage wheels. All right, guys. <laughs> I've uh, cleaned all of the wheels. I've re-greased all of the wheels. And then uh, one thing I wanted to show you guys while it's upside down still is um, these, uh, this uh, two nuts determine the placement of this eye hook and that determines the exact length of the leather strap. So if one leather strap is longer than the other, then that's how you adjust for that. So we'll check that right away. Let's turn this carriage back around. And carefully lay it in. Now we're going to out around the shoulder rest on my side. We're about to do that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh dear. I have to, I reversed, I flipped the carriage 360 so now the straps are crossed like so. So I need to take that carriage out and flip it all the way over again. So now that the carriage is back in the right way, we want to move both these straps. Make sure they're even on those wheels because that can throw it off. And then you check that the two straps are equally long. About the right length. You, you guys see how it's about an inch past the headrest here. But it looks to me like a good pull. Well, 
they're e pretty even. So maybe a tad longer. I'm wondering if I should readjust it or not. It seems so much in here that I'm not sure, not even sure it's longer. So we'll we'll say it's okay. We'll say they're even. Otherwise, I would go back in here under that those nuts that I showed you and either shorten one just a tiny bit or lengthen the other one just a tiny bit. But it looks pretty good. You want to make sure there's uh, your tracks are clear, that there's no little buildup of residue here in your tracks. So I'm just going to take a cloth. It's really pretty clean because we keep it pretty clean so it doesn't build up. If it was really dirty, then we'd need a, some kind of cleaning product. But since it's pretty clean, just give it a wipe with a dry cloth. And that's it. Reformer maintenance is done for today. <laughs>